Thanks, um, Lascaux and Corla. Um, if I may, at the outset, I just want to make a few comments in relation to the junior doctors' uh, dispute today. I think it's very regrettable, and you know we have to consider the plight of junior doctors. Equally, we have to consider the people whose uh, procedures and operations were indeed cancelled today. And I think it's incumbent on everybody to get together to try and resolve this. I think we'd all be agreed on that uh, for the betterment of everybody. And I think it is fair to say that junior doctors over the years have been failed by the state. Um, they've been failed also by uh, the IMO, their trade union. I think the old guard of the IMO, and I know that the IMO have changed recently, there's been a change in the leadership there, and I think that is refreshing and it is welcome. Uh, and I think uh, it's about time that they got proper representation and proper leadership uh, from their trade union. Minister, I, I think the debate tonight uh, crystallises uh, a, number of, a number of points which I just want to address, address briefly. Why are people cynical about politics and about politicians and about us and the profession that, that we um, are engaged in? It is because there is a complete disconnect between what happens uh, people on the ground and what they hear from officials speak. Uh, and that is regrettable. And the fact of the matter is this. Um, you will say, and your minister will say, and your department will say that there has been no change in policy. But there has been a de facto change in policy. Uh, and there is no getting out from under that. And that is what we are experiencing every day of the week. Uh, that is what people who are, are experiencing on the ground when uh, they get notification that they have been unilaterally uh, cut off their medical card, that their medical card has been withdrawn. And a lot of these people, the first time that they ever um, hear of this or become aware of this, is when they're actually in uh, their doctor's clinic or their doctor's surgery. Now, there's a number of reasons for that. Uh, there may be fault on all sides, but I don't think that that is good enough. Uh, it's not good enough for the patient, for the cardholder. It's not good enough for the doctors either. And when people are sick and in a stressful scenario, uh, the last thing they need to be doing, uh, apart from uh, trying to get themselves better, is worrying about the status of their medical card. And, you know, to, to, to say that that uh, isn't uh, something which you're responsible for or the department isn't responsible for isn't good enough uh, and it needs to be addressed. Now, my main concern, and I'm going to raise a specific case here in, in, the, in the 60 seconds that I have left, is in relation to the discretionary medical card for cancer patients. And I will give you the details of the case uh, when, when we're finished and I have the permission of this lady, Anne, uh, to, to raise her case. She rang me from her hospital bed on a number of occasions. She was diagnosed with breast cancer last February. She had a chemotherapy treatment. She had a mastectomy. She's now having radiation in Limerick and bone treatment in Cork. And she's due a second round of chemo in Cork in due course. And, you know, I, I think it's regrettable and reprehensible that, that I have to raise her case here um, in the chamber of Dáil Éireann, albeit with her permission, to try and further along her case. And I have been dealing with the PCRS people, and she is at the end of her tether. Um, you know, it's about a medical report, and her GP has furnished a detailed medical report. She, she's literally at the end of her wit's end, uh, and her GP is saying to her, I have furnished the PCRS, your medical status. This woman has cancer. And, you know, Apart from this case, which I'll give you the details, all the other cases of people right around the country um, who've had their cars unilaterally withdrawn, when people are sick, they can't work, they can't earn money. Some of them might have insurance cover or, or illness cover, uh, but others don't. And medical no, cards entitle them to other benefits, for example, school transport uh, for their kids or, or all the other knock-on benefits. So it's putting pressure on people. So what I want to say to you is this. Um, you have responsibility for medical cards. There has, in effect, been a de facto change in policy, and I think we just need to be honest with ourselves and get away from uh, the official uh, spin which has been put out about this that there hasn't been, because the figures prove it, and the evidence is on the ground and it's there in our clinics, and I really think that you need to, to meet the challenge head-on. Thank you.